Um, but I think the main thing, if you look ahead of uh, next year, I don't think Ireland poses any threat mm -hmm. to us really. Neither does France. They mm -hmm. saw opportunities, weaknesses in certain teams' gameplay, like for example France with their long kicking mm -hmm. game. Besides, the games can go either way. We're not <laughs> okay. going to be blown up out, out, out the water. This team is not. Um, so, massive positive to it. Also, the fact that this was played outside of the test match window gave us a chance to play Yvonne the Roos. You know, play a few different players. We the Springbok team that faced England tonight stand a very good chance of defending the Rugby World Cup crown in France next year. So the Springbok team that we saw against Ireland, that was the vanilla default Springbok team. The Springbok team that we saw against France was a very attack-minded Springbok team, a very interesting Springbok team, a very different Springbok team. And the Springbok team that we saw tonight against England was a combination of the Springbok teams we saw playing against Ireland and against France. And the Springbok team that we saw against England, that is the Springbok team that's going to rock up at the Rugby World Cup in France in 2023. My take from tonight's game was the overall play from Damien Willemse. So there was two occasions where Damien Willemse received the ball in the Springbok half. And instead of kicking the ball back, he chose to look up and to see gaps and he chose to run the ball against England. And Damon Willemse, by doing that, he released one of the most exciting players currently in world rugby in the form of Kirtley Aronsa. We saw Kirtley Aronsa scoring a beautiful try due to what Damon Willemse did. And we also saw Damon Willemse doing the same thing when the Springboks almost scored a try in the same vein. What Damon Willemse also contributed to this victory was his beautifully taken drop goals that kept the Springboks scoreboard ticking. And I thought that was a very good contribution from Timon Willemse, where he once again put his name in lights in the green and gold jersey. The Springboks dominated England in every facet of this game, in the form of the scrums, the lineouts, at the breakdown, as well as at defence. England did not have an answer to what the Springboks offered in this entire game. I rate Eddie Jones very high. I made a couple of videos where I sing the praises of Sir Eddie Jones and I still think that Eddie Jones is the right man for the England job. I don't think there's a coach that can come in now and revive England before the 2023 Rugby World Cup. The Springboks, they were just good tonight and England, they have plenty of stuff to work on but Eddie Jones is still a coach that everybody in World Rugby must respect and take seriously. England also had a couple of opportunities, especially in the second half when Jack Knoll came on. I think he had a very good game. His counter-attacking against the Springboks were very good. I noticed two occasions where he counter-attacked very beautifully, where that almost lead, led to opportunities for England to score tries against the Springboks. So the stats in this game is quite interesting. By watching this game, I felt that the Springboks had more runs. I felt that the Springboks kicked less out of hand. However, the stats this is another story where the Springboks kick more out of hand than England and the Springboks and England they ran the ball more than what the Springboks ran the ball. Position was fairly equal for the whole of the match. The scrums is where England got in trouble as well as with the line out where England they only won 42% of their own scrum ball and 66% of their line out. The Springboks were quite solid at scrum time and at line out time. Both teams gave away quite a few penalties. Normally at international level, teams look to concede 10 or less penalties, where England considered 13 penalties and the Springboks considered 12 penalties. So the hero of this match for me is none other than Kurt Lee Aronsa. Kurt Lee Aronsa is an up and coming superstar, not only in South African rugby, but I believe in world rugby. So Kurt Lee Aronsa is my hero of the match. The villain of the match, to me, was Johnny Hill. The guy gave away three or four silly penalties. One of the penalties he gave away was when the ref gave England a free kick. He then pulled Faf the crack from the rack and Faf flew to the back and the ref reversed the free kick in favour of a penalty to the Springboks. And the Springboks, they went for the line out, driving ball. And even it's a bit, he managed to score a try of that piece of ill discipline from Johnny Hill. So to me, Johnny Hill is the villain of the match. The Domkop of the match. 
to me was Thomas the Toy. So there was incidents where Malcolm Marx, he was wrestling with Kawan Tiki. Malcolm Marx had Kawan Tiki, like stable. All Thomas the Toy had to do was just stand back or just come in slightly to help Malcolm Marx to hold Kawan Tiki up. However, Malcolm Marx, he came in with a shoulder to, to Kawan Tiki's head, which I thought was very unnecessary. And for that, he received a red card. The Springboks could have so easily lost that game due to having to play for 20 minutes with 14 men. So to me, the Domkop of this game was Thomas the Toy. So guys, we've come to, an, to the end of the in Autumn Internationals. It's quite clear which teams are favourites to win the World Cup next year. And those teams are Ireland, France, South Africa and New Zealand. Those are the four teams that stand a very good chance to win the World Cup. However, it's quite sad is that two of those teams will not make it past the quarterfinals. But I still predict that one of those four teams will win this Rugby World Cup. So guys, did you guys enjoy the game? What did you feel about the game? Was England decent? Were they poor? Was the Springboks good? What What is the Springboks chances of winning the World Cup? I'd like to hear from you guys. I want to thank you guys for watching this video. For those who haven't subscribed to my channel, subscribe to my channel, like this video, and I'll catch you guys on my next video.